pay for the uh, lodgement. If you are going to take cash to the counter, we will not accept. We only accept uh, BSP cards or Westpac cards. Or, you know, we, we, we do transaction using cards. We don't accept cash. But if you are going to use the online system, you will have to have a, a Visa card that can be able to be used to make payments uh, online. The next entity is associations. Usual times, uh, there is a, another misunderstanding that uh, associations are businesses. Uh, yes, they, some associations have their objectives. In those objectives, some of them are related to doing business. But association is, uh, it consists of a group of people that pursue a common goal, uh, be it uh, to provide a certain service to the community, or be it a, a group comprising of only women, or it can be a group of only, say, uh, girls only, or boys only, or it can be a club. So an association is a non-government organization. It is uh, not profit-oriented. So by the mere fact that it's not profit-oriented, it's not a business. Businesses, their primary goal is to make profit, whereas an association is, their primary objective is to pursue the objective of the association. The reason why you set up an association is to say, for example, in, in, a, in a girl group or a women's group, they want the women to be empowered. So that is their key objective. How do they do it? It's through their activities. They don't pursue a, a profit. So you need to have a constitution. Uh, once, when you, when you uh, lodge an association, you first lodge your intention. Once the intention is approved, then you get the intention that is approved, the approved intention, then you go to the newspapers, national or post, and you, you, you publish it. Uh, that publication cost will be borne by the application, applicant uh, himself or herself. And then that uh, notice will run for a month. After a month, there is no objective, ah, sorry, uh, no, uh, no uh, objections by any parties. If there are no objections, or objections then, then you will have to come back to the uh, IPA and you lodge the actual application which will cost you only 70 kina. So I'm clear. This is the form I mentioned about the intent. Uh, you submit the intent. Once that is approved, then uh, you will go and publish and then you come back with the public publication notice and then you lodge the application. The next group is a business group. It is reserved for uh, rural settings, as in villages. Uh, previously, we used to have the, like the ILGs, uh, incorporated land groups. They, once, that's a land group. But if you want to, that land group to be a business, then this uh, business group was also designed to uh, accommodate that. So groups, uh, for instance, family groups, village groups, clan groups, that's why I said ILG. Uh, could potentially team up and venture into business. So uh, even a cooperative can also have its members registered as a business group. The registration fee is 100 kina. Business groups and cooperative societies are different entities. I just want to make that clear. Form A is the form that you fill to uh, apply for a business group incorporation. You fill this form, you lodge it, and then once uh, approved, then the certificate will be issued. The, the business group, I sort of, this made it sort of, uh, I did not uh, go too much into it, is because it's, uh, at the moment, uh, we don't get uh, that many applications for business groups, unlike in the past, but it's still uh, encouraged. We, we want you to also 
That's why we uh, continue to make that. Uh, it's it's a it's an act under an act of parliament that we have to administer. So, business groups is also an important uh, business entity type. People seem to forget about it. I don't know for whatever reason, but maybe it's easier to do a company and a business because in a business group it involves a, a lot of people, uh, a clan. So uh, maybe that's tedious to do. That's why it's not that. But but. There are people who still uh, register business groups. I think this one, companies is the one that is more, uh, because it can be only one person. But you can perform more than one type of uh, business activity, yeah. So a company, you, under a company, as a Papua New Guinea, once you register a company, then you can do, like I said, uh, building and construction. You can also do transport. You can do fishing, you can do tourism, under that one company. So companies, uh, you can do, perform uh, more than one type of activity. Uh, otherwise, for a business name, it's only uh, one activity. And companies, they don't expire. But comp you can have a constitution uh, in a company. And in a company, you have shareholders and directors. Shareholders are the owners of the company. Directors are mere managers of the company. Directors are not the owners of the company. Directors are the ones who run the company. They manage the day-to-day -day affairs of a company. When it comes to ownership of the company, it's the shareholders. So the difference here is that uh, companies don't expire. But the catch is that you need to lodge an annual return every year. Every year, you must lodge an annual return. Whereas for a business name, every year it expires and you have to renew it. Companies, they don't expire. You just have to lodge your annual returns every year. <coughs> so when the company is at default, who are the liable persons? The people who manage the company day to day. So the directors will be held liable. The shareholders will be <laughs> later on. So. I think I wanted to stress that from the start because you are business, and some of you may be running businesses or managing businesses. And we also, sometimes we see that directors become more powerful than the shareholders because they run the day-to-day -day activities. Or sometimes when the directors are, or the company is at default, then the directors think that it is the shareholders, but it is the directors who will be held liable. This is the process you go through for a company registration. You will see that there are four, uh, five different forms that you will need to fill. Uh, form one, form two, form three, form four, and form six. Uh, you can actually get all the forms together, staple them, and fill them as one and submit. Or you can uh, go online and fill them uh, individually. But at the end of the process, uh, it should give you a Form 5 or a certificate. So the Form 5, uh, the 5 itself is the certificate itself. So that's why 1, 2, 3, 4, the, the form, uh, one, two, three, four and 6 are the forms that you need to fill. If you go online and do it online, it's cheaper at 450. Uh, but if you go to the counter, say in Ley or in Mount Hagen or in Mosby, or you go through a, a third party, you, you might spend more than 600. Or, but the least, if you go by yourself, is 600 over the counter. Again, payment types are always the same. It's important to search for a name before you lodge a company registration. Why? Because you might, you sh I'm seeing a B business catering. Some, some company might have a BEE business catering limited, you know. So when you are doing your business, uh, it is the image, it is the names. Huh? So when, when they go out, uh, people are very, uh, when they see that, oh, one company is doing, you know, has a good uh, reputation. They always want to. You, you've seen the uh, K1 cola and you know Coca-Cola and you know 
some of them use those, you know, because those are very popular colors, and that's why businesses use those. They want to make it look similar. That's why it's better to check a name, and in the, from the start, I said, you need to have a business idea uh, when you, before you register, because your business idea must also match the name of that business or company. So it's better to always uh, check the name before you receive it. One of the reasons why we say this is that uh, once your application may be filled you know, properly and you pay the appropriate fees, but <coughs> if there is already an existing name similar to it, it will be rejected. And then you will have to go back through the whole process again. So I'm clear? All right. So what are the key takeaways? A business name is easier to manage. Uh, and you can later on, you can convert that business name to a company. So uh, like I said, big, big uh, catering. At the moment, it's a business name. I'm just using big catering because at the end, uh, limited is not there. So big catering is a business name. Uh, uh, this example. So big catering and then it goes and it grows and then it goes. So like uh, for the SBT tax, it's 60,000. But maybe it's going up to going towards 250. Now that's the time you may want to decide to, you know, uh, get it into a company. Then you may say uh, be catering limited. So that becomes a company. And then you obviously will have to use the different form. So always invest in your time in your business idea and consider its structure. You know, I was saying you have to have an idea and you must actually know who the directors will be. And, you know, in a, in a company you know shareholders, directors, managers, or, you know, whatever. But sometimes it can be one person, or husband and wife, that's okay. But as you grow, you will need ends. You will need people to work. So you need to already plan ahead. So in one year, I will have one employee. In the second year, I will have two to three employees. Those things you need to plan ahead. Have that idea. Remember that formalizing your business comes with responsibilities. Uh, responsibilities including paying for tax. Uh, therefore, it is important that you understand how the different entities work and it will help you better manage your uh, compliance requirements uh, as you are going for. I think uh, that's the end of my presentation. Uh, if you want to ask uh, more questions, I'd be happy to take them. But uh, those are our email addresses. Uh, but I will also be around. Uh, you can also uh, ask questions. Thank you very much. Um, thank you, um, Director, Investor Servicing and Promotion Division for IP, Mr. Dora Peter. As indicated, I'll take one or two questions. Some um, say, I think I, I, I see one or two hands at the back. We'll take um, that one, two question, and then we move on. So we have our gentleman sitting in um, front here. Thank you. Mike is coming that way. Thank you, uh, sir, for a very nice presentation. Uh, my question. Uh, is uh, to do with the uh, subject of uh, a company, a public company like uh, Octedi Mining versus, say, uh, XYZ PMV uh, Limited. Uh, basically, it's uh, involving the issue of uh, limited liability versus uh, public. Can you sort of explain the law surrounding those? We register a limited liability company and uh, like a limited liability company. Thank you. I, I understand your question is uh, not specifically on the different entity types, right? Uh, that's my understanding. The, Outside of those different entity types, you're only picking on one, uh, which is a company, and that company is a limited liability. Uh, perhaps uh, for uh, 
uh, transparency or uh, in, in terms of responding, maybe there's different uh, elements to it uh, in terms of either tax or in terms of uh, IPA requirements. We can uh, discuss that, but I, I really wanted you to clarify where, which Angoli we are coming from. But uh, I see that uh, you made reference to uh, like Octedi, which is uh, more like a public, uh, because there are also others like publicly listed companies against you know, individual companies. Those are different elements of it. But the purpose of my presentation here is to uh, address the audience here, which we see is the small to medium enterprises, and uh, in order to give them that information so that they can be able to uh, grow. Uh, I think for your case, is the businesses that are already have grown. Uh, however, I'm not saying that it's not relevant. I, it's relevant, but uh, perhaps for this forum, uh, we can leave it at that. But I think it's better to also respond in the manner that uh, some of our small businesses uh, need to be included into some of the bigger mining companies or bigger, you know, companies that do their businesses. And at a bigger scale, let's, let's say, for example, uh, you have uh, Opteddy, they, they have uh, other services that need to be provided, like well, for bilan catering and all the, or, you know, those services, those spin-offs should be by SMEs. Uh, and then you have like companies like, I mean, using different uh, spectrums. And then you have a company like the City Pharmacy. Uh, they are doing their, you know, retail or sale, but they also get in uh, our local uh, produce to be in the stores. I think that for us, that is the relevance for this session. Uh, in terms of uh, your question, we can uh, uh, speak to you maybe after the, this session. I hope, say, I un uh, answered your question. Oh, sorry, sir. Thank you. Maybe I'll help you a little bit uh, where I was really coming from. I think you mentioned that uh, directors will be liable. Huh? But say, if I ran a, a say, uh, what is the name? Say, a PMV business, and I have about five fleets, and five years or six years into the running, you know, I somebody decided to ban my vehicles. So I owe National Development Bank, say, half a million. Now, under the law, it says that, I mean, my understanding is that NDB can come and, you know, can't touch me as a person. Can you sort of explain a little bit more on that? I think uh, what I meant here is that NDB or whoever the, sorry, Thank you. I, I thank you for that question. I think that's more relevant, and I, I totally forgot about this. But I, while I have this opportunity, I have this booklet here. This is a booklet that we produce. It's called a business licensing and information uh, service that we provide at the Investor Servicing and Promotion uh, Division. What it does is uh, it gives you uh, information about IPA gives information about uh, intellectual property, Bank of Papua New Guinea, NCD. Because what you do is, when you register a company and you get the certificate, that's not the end of the line. You need to go to IRC and get a TIN. And then you, from the IRC, you will go to uh, the bank to open an account uh, at the account. But if you are in a, say for example, building and construction, you need to also obtain a, a permit. So this booklet uh, gives, those are uh, different types of uh, uh, information about uh, where to get those licenses or, because there are different licenses and permits, like you know, if you are into the liquor business, you need to go into, uh, you don't go into black market. You need to go and get a liquor license from NCD if you are in NCD and you run your liquor license. I mean, I, 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 I forgot, thank you for uh, asking that question. But this booklet is also available from the IPA. It's, uh, a work in progress, we are also updating it, so, uh, but if you want uh, information on it, we, we can certainly share. For, but also insurance is also in there. Thank you. Thank you. We have a lot of questions, but um, I'll take two and move the discussion. The, the presenters are gonna be here, be around. So if you have specific questions you'd like to ask to them, um, we'll, we'll do that 
Run, but I'll take um, one more. Um, prob our say thank you. And yeah, you'll have to stay here. Thank you. You have two more questions. Now. Yeah, that's good. Answer. Thank you. Uh, I've got two um, questions. The first one is you said something about registration of an association. And then you also mentioned um, con they've got the constitution. constitution. Now, you said something about the advertisement going on for one month, and then it comes back to your office for formally rec recognizing it and all this stuff. So you said something about the constitution. So do you provide that? That's my first question. Yes. The second question is, now we have got IRC conducting a session like this, where it actually points out to us that the forms that we need to complete are very clear. So I'm just asking if IPA does something like that too. Because I know that the returns that come in, some of the questions are not answered properly because of the, uh, the information is not clear to people like us. So is there a thing that you have in place for us to prepare when we present our inter um, returns to you every year? Thank you. It's a very good question. Uh, I first, the first one is uh, on constitution. Yes, we do have a model constitution. Uh, when you go and apply for or lodge your intent, uh, before you do, or you want to, it's just a model. It gives you a guide. It does not uh, say that you have to follow that full constitution. Because the constitution belongs to you. You decide what should be in your constitution. You decide who will be the members. You decide who the office bearers will be. And you decide how long they will stay. And you decide how long you will have your meetings. The, the model that we have is just to guide you on some of the key things that we uh, want to see in a constitution. So yes, the answer is we do have. In terms of uh, the making it easier in terms of the forms, yeah, we do also uh, acknowledge that uh, we still uh, have work to do in terms of getting the forms. I think ideal in an ideal well, uh, just as an example, the, the, because you have, a, for example, a company, you have to lodge an annual return with the IPA. You know, the form itself is, uh, it, it takes a while to fill, and then as if that, that's not enough, you, when you go to IRC, you have to do another annual return. In an ideal world, we would like to see that uh, we do one uh, as, so it can be, both agencies can share that information. That's, uh, it will happen <coughs> uh, as and when we progress, but we, we need to you know, start somewhere. So both agencies are already, as I said, we have a partnership, we have a MOU. Those are some of the work in progress. But I don't want to you know, preempt what is going to, what I'm basically saying is that Yes, we do appreciate that the, the forms can be challenging for SMEs or uh, individuals who are from uh, like different levels of uh, society. So we do appreciate that. But it is the one form that every businesses, companies will fill, be it big or small. It is the one form. That's why it is more. Uh, we try to make it hit the middle, middle line. We don't want to make it so simple that the bigger ones will not be able to provide some information. Or we make it so difficult that the smaller ones will not be able to provide that information. But it is a work in progress. Uh, I think for, for me as an encouragement, if you go online, when you do it online, it's much easier because it will be self-correcting. Uh, if you are going to fill a section where it is not filled properly, the system will tell you to fill that part in, and it will tell you, uh, give you an example. So online is much better, and it's cheaper. Uh, I hope I answered your question. Thank you. Thank you. We'll take one from the middle, and one from the from this side. I understand IPA is a big um, um, agency organization that we have so many questions. So. Um, I'm sure our friends from this year will be only speaking on one 
sort of entity type, which is the cooperative society. So I'll allow for one extra. So we'll take one, our good gentleman at the back, and one from the other side, and we should be done with IPA, as indicated. He will be here till lunch and probably a bit after lunch as well. So. Uh, Mr. Mr. Peter, my good friend, I'm from the district. Uh, on, on this matter, SPT, and uh, under the con constituency of uh, SME and MSME side, and you mentioned something about uh, registration on uh, companies and salon term registration, that it never expire, that you will hold on to the certificate. But also you mentioned that uh, there would be only one in a time of your annual return. But coming, coming, coming back to uh, and other other description that you made was that um, that company would do multiple of business activities. Uh, that's where the confusion comes comes to me in in terms of when doing a tax return on on, on SPT tax, uh, whether the IRC would uh, would uh, look at specific scope of area activity that I would do the tax signal. Just, just a question that needs to be captured uh, from, from your, uh, uh, your part. Thank you. If you could try to deliberate and elaborate on the part. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'll just simply answer it this way. You, you don't necessarily, if you register a company, you don't necessarily have to do all the activities. Just do one. Doesn't mean that because it's a company, then you have to go and do everything. That's why it's important to have a business idea from the start. What am I going to do? Am I going to go into PMV? If I'm going to go into PMV, then I'll register it, but what type of entity should I choose? Should it be a business name or should it be a company? If I am going to go for a business name, then I must be prepared to renew it every year. If I am going to go as a company, then I must be prepared to lodge annual returns every year. That's it. If you can't confuse yourself by you know, saying that, oh, because I'm a company, I need to do everything, please don't do that. Because that's the start of your failure. If you decide to go and do everything all at the same time, you will not be able. Imagine having to do <laughs> uh, PMV business and uh, tourism business. And I, I know some small businesses who are doing like PMV. Uh, Ayaka and uh, Lodge, all at the same time. Some of them are successful. Others, they struggle. So it's important to have a business idea. I'll just keep it as short as that. Thank you. Thank you. We'll take a last question from that side. And we will move on to our next speaker. Thank you. Uh, name Lumi Thomas. Uh, me operating one blood uh, canteen law, one blood settlement, na directly opposite Lumi, and one blood foreign enemy staff. So, me look for any blood in me like at all kind of canteen pull up law slab when me blessed up. But now, plenty of me blow law is easy, stop Lumi go down na Me blow a clutch now. Question blow me a monsem. IPA. You blow also a regulatory body. Milex away, one of the criteria you bless a Bianimna, giving or license or you bless a registering business loan, all foreigners way, all come occupy more businesses, all Pabonu Guinea Bay, by making them. Thank you. Yeah, that's a. I, I know why everybody's clapping. I, myself as well. Uh, no, I, I mean, it's important. Uh, let's not beat around the bush. Uh, we see it. Uh, but firstly, let me thank you for introducing yourself. Now I, I can address you as Thomas. All the others did not. Uh, so Thomas, uh, where you are staying and whichever that uh, foreign enterprise is or a foreigner, please can you uh, send us a you know, letter or photo and then we can come and do an inspection. And we will we'll, uh, need your assistance to tell us. Uh, but firstly, you need to tell us the name of that uh, company or if it's a business name because you know I why I said that everybody is clapping is uh, it was in a, in a way sometimes we are our own worst enemies uh, we see things happening but we don't report it and we expect the uh, you know 
regulators to know everything and go there. That's one. Two is that uh, the businesses sometimes are registered by Papua New Guineans. And Papua New Guinean companies are run by non-citizens. That's, that's another different thing. So we are now talking about what? Occupation. We are not talking about business. The business is owned by a Papua New Guinean. It is the occupation, the, uh, the director or the employee. The shareholder is a Papua New Guinean, am owner of the company. But the directors, am all non-citizens. They are whether, so this is another thing now. Are we talking about reserved activity or are we talking about reserved occupation? You see? So we need to also appreciate those challenges that we, as Papua New Guineans, need to you know, address at our own front first before we go out and, you know. I think what I want to do is, as I said, please uh, give us the name of that uh, business, where they are located. Uh, there are different things. In these four entities that we mentioned, I presented on was specifically for use. Uh, because we are Papua New Guineans and MSMEs. But there is another, I was saying earlier, there is another entity type which is the foreign enterprise. There, every company that, any, anybody that does business in Papua New Guinea must register an entity, uh, either of those four. And then if they are managed and controlled by uh, non-citizens, then they have to go through the process of foreign enterprise certificate. So that, that's where the foreign enterprise certificate comes in. So if Thomas is going to give me the name of that company, and if I see that that company is uh, uh, owned, uh, uh, owned and controlled by a citizen, then it will be the, I will have to refer that matter to the labor department or uh, work permits or the appropriate agency that should go in and deal, because they are now bothering on uh, a uh, non-citizen engaging in a job that should be a Papua New Guinea. IPA does not go into that. Uh, we will only check whether they are foreign enterprise certified. I'm clear, uh, please. But please let us, you know, keep our space. If we, if we do the right thing, then we obviously expect others to do the right thing. When the others are not doing the right thing and we are, we are facilitating not doing the right thing, you know, who, who, who should we blame? But I'm not give, throwing the excuse back. We, our IPA is there to uh, uh, compl uh, ensure that the uh, compliance is done. Thank you. Um, thank you, Director Peter from the um, uh, IPA. Um, that will conclude our questions to um, our friend from uh, IPA, thank you for answering questions. Um, during the course of the um, four days, um, you, you know, we're, as, as agencies, as organizations, we're also putting ourselves out there. We have our challenges, like it's indicated, not only for him. I'm sure when our NCDC um, presenter also comes on board, she'll also indicate some of the challenges that um, they face in enforcing, especially to do with our other friends that are also conducting business. Um, IPA also mentioned, you know, before you want to do a business, plenty time, it's typical, Yumi. You may stop, so you may think also one plus something, but come up, or an opportunity, or you may run to solve goal all. Register him to solve one plus business name, 60 Kamlo IRC. Kamlo IRC too, you may not wait till the process will take place, or somewhat to explain to you, no. Sim to solve certificate, you may 60 Golo bank. That is not proper planning, having a good business idea that you know you've sort of planned over time, identify one and more areas we must make him. So and then the you know the when it comes to the compliance part of it, as um, administering agencies, how 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 do we tackle that? But when in fact too in the first instance, you may have to yeah, we so these avenues like this, yeah, I mean, pluck them out law, or some clearing. You don't just start and one week or two weeks, you from here say you are him or say no. This like I'm back, I'm happy. I have to register in business, no. And me pluck discourage him. 
Go to the um, organizations, IPA, the IRC for that matter, because our, um, our registration and teen registration would be the next um, session after lunch. Um, based on the registration from IPA, we sort of allocating which tax types would be suitable for your business. But Ember, even more better if we do it the other way. Before you go and register, come and sit with us and talk to us. So that Mipla guide him you. No, you make him all same. Or oh, this business should have maybe one plow now, two plow now, that's all. Because in terms of reporting, it will have its own set of responsibilities again. So that um, after lunch, we will go through that. Um, again, our take from now, um, planning is very important. Huh? Planning is very important. And there are various um, types of entities with the um, IPA that our good director has gone through already. So once again, thank, oh, he forgot one thing. Can I last say this last, you know, as I said from the start, I am from the promotion investor servicing service. I provide a service free of charge, paid by the government. So my division does that. Uh, so if you have any, you want to see us and you know, want to get us to explain to you the forms and process of IPA, my door is open. Uh, please come and see me. I have officers in my division that does that. Uh, and I can refer you to the appropriate registration officers. Uh, if, you are, if it's going to do with the registration, then I will uh, refer you to the appropriate uh, registration officers within the IPA. So no can think of them at the IPA, you just go to the registration office only. No, you come to us too. Uh, that is my division's job. I can handle your end and take you through the process. Thank you. Thank you. Um, once again, IPA. We'll move on to our next speaker from the Department of Commerce and Industry, um, Mr. Sam. Thank you. Please kindly make him um, welcome him on board. Thank you, MC. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm on behalf of our uh, Department of Commerce and Industry. I just want to say thank you. Uh, Inviting us from IRC to take part in this event. With that, uh, the corporate society is under the Department of Commerce and Industry. So, before we go into our registration process, I'll just give you some uh, brief history on what is cooperative and all this. Okay, corporate society, we have our mission statements. What does corporate do and all this? To encourage effectively to the meaningful of participants of all ordinary peoples in rural community and villages. In the national development process to be participate economic process and progress on the manual society welfare and to resolve the end of individual true corporate societies. Okay, corporate society, we are dealing with the rural people. People who normally stay in the village, how they can mobilize themselves into a group to register. Objectives, down there you can see the, uh, to affect the different <coughs> process and provide support services to the develop of our cooperatives in Papua New Guinea and the primary cooperatives and to rural development. Brief history, how this cooperative been come up with Papua New Guinea. You can see the cooperative there. Corporate society introduced in 1947 by the Australian administration under native societies, 1950 and corporate society nice in 1965. So that's where the corporate society has been formed during colonial time. During that time, reduced more than 500 cooperatives, cash crops, retail stores, credit facilities and other cooperatives welfare vibrant, were vibrant business entities that serviced the rural areas in 1950s, 60s and 70s as well. So you can see 1975, the cooperative had been dismissed. That's the time when 
we have our independence. So when the Australian bin go back, we have our corporate state society has been dismissed. They reduce us by their own. They transform into a corporate company in transfer goal of company business. It went to a company. So those cooperatives registered under that period of time, they were transferred into a companies. In 1982, they amended 1985 without regulations. So that's where the submission has been coming to NEC, but without the uh, regulation. Regardless, approval on 15th of April 2003 by NEC that enabled CSU to begin operation. So that's where the time that cooperative been revived and began to operate. So what is cooperative now? Cooperative is an automotive association of person united volunteer to be meet their common economic support. Culturally needs and other inspiration through our corporate gently owns and democratically and controlled entities. Based on the value of a self-help, it's just a self-help. It's not from you registered and then you go to look for a business. No, you have to mobilize your people and then register and you can self-start. That's where the cooperative is. So you can see the members believe in the, the will of the honestly open social responsibilities and carrying on other for others. Hence, it is a business association with welfare issues, its primary concerns of interest. So you can see the uh, Number one, voluntary and open membership. Without the understanding of society, politics, and regulations of discrimination. Number two, the metro members control. Members have to be equal, say, and control over the affairs of the society. Automation and independence. Automation have to be organized, controlled by their members. Number five, Equally, you can see they uh, contributed to the uh, share and capital of societies, education, training, information, community to be encouraged, and training to members in other effective co corporate among cooperatives. So they have to be cooperate among themselves to work as a group. Work, working groups through local, provincial, national, and international operations network, consent for community sustainable development of their community. Communities, communities. Why relation and why the cooperative been uh, review or have been come? So you can see reliability. <coughs> Rehabilitation of the uh, cooperative in here 2000 by, mini by Ministry of Commerce and Industry, SME policy adopted by the government in 1998. Summary government policy has been recovered and developed. Development, export drive, strategically rural development policy and introducing and empowering people to use promises to the cooperative development. Currently, government policy on take back PNG through S MSME, mobilization and empowering the, our people to be self led and economically independent through corporate society concept. Important of MSME, operation societies, cooperative societies, concept, compliance and the government economic development goals as export by the PNG vision, 2050 MTGP, PNG strategy development plan, PNG SDP, 2010-2020. The national strategy for the responsible sustainable development in PNG start that can calls for follow Papua New Guinea, Papua New Guinea to dream and world LTN, educated societies. Corporate society business registration requirement. That's where we are coming in now. Registration fee 
25 kina. Registration fee, 25 kina. Bank extract, open in an account. TIN certificate for IRC. Those are the key requirement. Because once you are registered, we have our applications out there, our booth at the outside. If you're interested to go through all those guidelines, you can go out and we'll just give you some sort of brief on how to fill the application. But those requirements, when you, once you are registered, you cannot just get your certificate and walk away and go look for funding, no. You need to follow the requirement. Procedure, once you are registered, when you, are, when you get your certificate, the office will write you a letter to bank to open an account, but you need to go to IRC first to get certificate. Those are the bank requirement. So we have to follow the procedure. So once you are into business, just to mobilize your people, get registered, and then after issuing a certificate, we'll write a letter to the bank. You face its fee. After pay, paying your sales fee, the bank will come and confirm the signatories of the account. Who will be the signatories of the account? After conducting the sales, then you will open your account. But bank also need the TIN certificate, so the letter will go straight to, we will issue a letter, write a letter to IRC, and you'll fill the application to get your TIN certificate to attach the document together to open your account. So those are some of the uh, requirements that we normally give to the uh, advice our client for registration process. Cooperative is another business organization. Cooperative are similar to other business organizations registered under IPA. It's the similar, but it's a group. It's into group. That rural people or youths or uh, agricultural activities can be formed as a group to be registered. Or fishing. If you are in coastal side, if you are into a fishing, you can mobilize your fishing fishermen so they can be registered as a fishing group. And then we can issue a certificate and you can open an account too. So people who go out in for fishing come back, they sell their fish and they can get their income to deposit into their account for business activities. However, they have a guide by their seven principles, except principles, we also have a, in the application rules, we have also a principles there to guide you how to go through or manage your cooperative so that it can drive you successfully. Cooperative are normal business entity which operate under the Corporate Societies Act of 1985. So we are still using that same old, and we are under process that Corporate MSC, MSME Cooperative are also S, MS in S, MSME, but they are group MSC medium Minimum of number of people over the age of 18 years eligible to form a cooperative. So those cooperative, if you're trying to form a cooperative, all members must be 18 years and above. You are eligible to fill the form, application form. Most co cooperatives are under the micro enterprise category as their annual tenure in less than 2015. So those taxes are coming in. Like cooperative, we cannot pay the tax because it's a small private cooperative. Until you go into a big business, that's where you're gonna pay a big tax. Huh? So those are the, some of the issues that we have to really look at it. I think it's, I just want to say thank you for IRC inviting us to attend this workshop because most of our clients, they are complaining about tax. So those are some of the areas that we have to really look at it. Because cooperative, we are dealing with rural people, and the tax, it's a, when you get your tax uh, thin certificate, I think we, this is first of its kind that we have been come across this workshop. 
because they haven't invited us to clear this thing out to our people, our cooperative clients, to pay tax. So when you're into a big business, maybe after five years term, then you can pay a big uh, tax to a uh, IRC or some, they can give you some instruction on a uh, business uh, tax uh, pay pay payment. So way forward, first, you will corporate society registration. Number two, national cooperative development policy. She has to become a strategy agent, agency. Number four, automation of registry system. Automation is one of the important that cooperative we are looking at now. We are already into a system of uh, automation. So when you launch our application, it will go straight to scan and it will come into a system. So we also have our college, exhibition of cooperative college and corporate corporate society courses into exhibition of institutions. Strategy monitoring and evaluation, function of establishing of financial assistance facility for the cooperatives. So we have those way forward, way forward key are already in place to move on. So like we have our four regions have been set up. Four regions have been set up for the uh, commerce division is already into our four regions, corporate societies. So in each provinces, we have officers there, commerce officers, so they get the applications, pay through bank, send them to us, to head office, and we screen, final screening, and then we run the certificate at the same time, and then issue a certificate, and then we give them a letter to open an account to run their business activities. So conclusion, the corporate society movement in is an idea vehicle that would drive the government society and economic policy to enhance mobilization and empowerment of rural people who advise will remain in the national development process in Papua New Guinea. And corporate society concept is the way forward for our people to be self-related for important our living standard. So that is where how uh, the corporate society has been a uh, start. And some of us, in past years, we don't know what is cooperative, and we used to go out and get forms registered and try to run our own business, but we have a procedure there. And we must know this concept very well before coming. But it's good to our rural, rural people, because normally, if you see our communities in rural areas, they only go out for fishing, agriculture activities, Sometimes, you know, like government, government give funds to uh, districts, they have no right to access because they are not re uh, recognized by states. So those DSIP funds, PSIP funds are just lying there and then transfer giving them out to other, uh, like their own personal use. But once you are registered, that once you got the certificate of cooperative, you are eligible to access those funds because you are registered your business activities in your area. So that's normally the corporate society, we deal with the rural people in group activities. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Um, Simon Asi from Department of Commerce and Industry. We'll allow for one or two questions. Yes. Um, we can all agree yeah, that in the past, in the recent past, cooperative societies were very powerful uh, in terms of business. They own businesses. Why can't it be the same in this time? So these people are very you know, passionate about driving that um, cooperative society must come back now only more business, um, business activities. I think our government is also focused on trying to encourage Agriculture, we've read in, suppose we follow through the news. Cooperative society would be the way forward. Um, he's here. Again, we'll take three questions. Maybe we can um, move on to the next speaker. Okay, I'll me, me start one time. Um, say. Thank you. Revenue Commission long conducting this last session. Me like talk to the fishing. Me all blah man. All same, now me like talk all same. 
There's a cooperative society law 1974. I mean, I exist. Now, me like ask him, Sam, or name below you, me lose him, director. Me like to call Sam. La Logi Cooperative Society College, I must come back. Because you back is in school or this law line, or not apply or something too. Kiss in school, that's all, and only walk in walk, and come up good. Only no kiss in school, only no nablo work in good. All same now me like talk, now you like review. Me play all this la line who said you've been attending this la cooperative school. You must, only must come so scientifically, you, you must give him money long all around him because cooperative society have one plan big plus something low 1974 I go on top. You play sensible in 1985, yeah? 1985, I mean, no come up good now. No God. Look him. You will look him. All the same, I mean, like talking to you. Me be Nicola Cooperative School, no, no, la, la, lucky, 1974. Some of you, no stop time talking to you. All the same, so, me like him by review, you must kiss him all certificate, but all this line, man who said he'd be Nicola School, or this is time, all the same age, blow me. All beginning, blow all the stop, or you know, stop, or one of them, all the same, like stop. All he must bring him certificate, he can back to you. Now you give him a long, long all, all he can rest at him. This is a way, all his hour of school, now all he's around him, school. All his hour of this kind of web of business, all his hour of group of village, all he make him all get something. Me yet, me look you lie below me, me be come up with us all. Plant is something come up with a no good long end, all he back up him, no blue line. All the same, so, me like he talking to you, director. Thank you, Lord, you come and present him this little talk talk below you, Lord, yeah. Me talk, God bless him, you. Lord, this little talk talk below you. Now, me give him you this little talk. You think, think that you working all together work, Lord, this little time. Thank you. Thank you, Thomas. Lo ask him below you. Uh, talk, talk, talk below you. Come go back in. Sorry, let me just acknowledge him. Uh, the talk below. Francis Mange, okay, Francis Mange. I think uh, I'm sure that I'm aware of that college, in Laloki College, but I was not born in that time. <laughs> but all the information are there. And I just want to say thank you. I want to welcome you. My office door is open. That's for the rural people. You can come and we can get some uh, ideas how the training has been begun. But those cooperatives, like they exchange, because when Australian administration, we know what the, when they go back to their country, we become authority, everything has been dismissed. And it's all up, uh, information has been pumped to national archives. All the information is meant to our business. I always uh, said earlier on, it's transferred to business. So those implements, I was trying to go through it, but I can't find it. Every time I refer them to IPA to contact their sets. I do a letter to IPA, contact their sets for their dividend sales, but the outcome is negative. So I'm very sorry on the in, uh, dividend sales, but let's start to begin a new cooperative and we move forward to get a middleman out of the way. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, my name is Benjamin, and I want to thank the facilitators, because I call all the way from Manus, and I think I'm privileged to be here. Thank you, uh, IRC, and uh, my brother, who I met last year for, when I was here for uh, registering and one of these cooperative society, ask him blow me also. Cooperative society, some of us are community oriented man elect work on them community. So I registered, got them registered to cooperative society and I appreciate you for doing that for us. Now I'm here to register Emblo Agriculture. My question is why can't we use the same cooperative society? Because these are the same people. Thank you. Now, suppose enough or you no come up yet, make it happen. How to register him again, not cooperative society again? 
But you see the same people involved in the same line of business. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I think it's a fishing cooperative from Manus. I do register a fishing group. I examine it and give them the certificate. But in your question, if the same people in the same group trying to form uh, agriculture activities, you can do a structure. Your directors, you can do a letter to us, and you can do your own structure that those directors can be managed their agriculture activities. The other directors can manage the fishing uh, activities. So when you get your income, when you're selling your product, your income, you can pump it to your own uh, cooperative. And then you can pay your labors or the income that uh, you collect from there. That will be easy. Because if you try to set up a same group into set, it, that is not uh, in our regulation. Because those are the areas that we have to really look at. Because if you, the, other cooperatives you're trying to register, and you are calling a meeting at the same time, those other cooperatives, how can they split themselves to join that uh, meeting you're trying to conduct? So you just do a, a structure, so you can manage from your structure, and uh, you can carry on to your business activities. Do a letter to us, we can just change their form four, and uh, we can give you the uh, idea, the activities to be changed with your meeting resolution conducted, and then we we'll proceed on to your cooperative. Thank you. Thank you. I'll, again, I'll take last two, one from the middle, one from the end. Um, Olain Bluyumilo, um, they've set up a booth outside. So good plan come present. Now you may got one question, I'll ask him. I'll buy stuff on them for the duration of the program till morning till afternoon. So they have a booth outside. Or maybe I should take just one, one question for now and we'll move on. Uh, thank you. Sorry. Minus I almost please show me my stock uh, top place because on behalf of uh, Hamas Cooperative for me Parone and Settle District, my place promise so we like talk peace in. Minus I almost be first time long me look I'm almost be so me talk so I can lo more up here. This la cooperative for me I'm taxing so I blow me because minus I almost be. Me run him this like cooperative time, me no got most crass. Low school fee problem, no me go low plus blow me. Now time this line cooperative I messed up. Inside the province, inside the district, me no look at one per cooperative society officers or running go inside long all exiting cooperative where me by stopping this lot is like ground. Now now me harem this like say cooperative I messed up low. How much years? Na mi pa man meri lo place o pilim tru tru na mi pa walk na na mi pa walk le export na walk wan ta mo coffee na cacao inside lo district na province bo mi na no ka wan pa kan officer inside lo cooperative em say come inside lo cooperative existing cooperative so how this lay say walk mi no kila so pas mi stop lo so I used to sell me now, me go down. I used to me local law. This law office, me no sell one of my pay more, must be. Because me man blow, man blow plus. So now I must stop law. Uh, you calling one perhaps law, this law office. Buy me go show one of them. Now buy me go inside now, buy me kissing to talk show one of them. Please, enough you talk shower so me can go inside now. Buy me make one of them because me stop 14 years. Sorry, Strat. Because minus a minus man do plus minus man do take talk so me gura na to talk eh. Because you taxing this la cooperative and you should taxi show blow me lo plus ya. Me plus man. So as you go lo more up eh you by calling me or say unen koi pa oba talk eh you say this la plus. Lo plus me stop lo town na rent him office na stop but no ka pan pa comex or cooperative only work one time me plan. Inside lo this la me look him or say. Ika penalty by me pa babain long IRC. 
Suppose me pay in a work in one time something one time all IRC. And by the way, because me no say lo IRC system, even tax too. Me no kill lo this la, na me be in him own way, blow me na come on top lo this la mark na how government by talking me lo work with this la something. Without understanding, in up some kind way, you pay can help me pay lo plus line. Because this time lo must be me and first time lo me lo come, so me foul no me gure. So restrict lo me pull it up. Okay, uh, thank you, Strat Law. It's a good legal question. We plan that all the commerce division staff law, it's uh, districts. Uh. All out of this like, commerce divisions, that's, they have uh, videos by staff, all offices by staff. So those are the key areas, poor regions, NIG. So those are the problem that we are facing now because commerce division, that's their part to Working awareness, the normal procedure of filling all this application. But we have a problem in the uh, provinces because commerce office and by me play med office. So commerce offices, me place I work close to law and then also I launch my application law, all commerce offices and then also I them come law, head office. The videos are there, okay, something stop law up. But if when you have an opportunity here, you can come to Mitchell Romana, next to Kira Maybank, Baroko Motors, and Mitchell Romana Edu NCD Education Office. But you look in local staff law, up. Department of Commerce and Industry, Ground Floor, and Corporate Society staff law. So I can help you now. Give some plug, good platin to you. The one plus something also, me, like I like him, me, you know, capture him is. Cooperative also have its own association as well. The maximum is three. When you have a cooperative society, a primary cooperative society, three registered, you are eligible to form an association. And also we will issue the uh, association certificate in our office. So that association will take care of those primary cooperatives. So that's uh, another thing that I've been uh, listening to, not excited about you, plan. But please, when you get your certificate, no can lose me plan because we are the driver and you are the upside. By me plan, learning you good, and then we'll just come in to monitor or look, 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 see more little report, Lord, try and go through, Lord. Thank you. Brother Blimi, talk talk long old same. Em is tab na ino kad look save na. This la five million you been go lend DP. How you plug monetary him na? Save old same bank you seem good na. I go long old man lo districts na this la. Government sa give money blong cooperative ya. Cooperative em government sa puti money go long em. But blong help him old man blong agriculture na fisheries na this la. But usat usat is save you seem this la money. Em so me plan like him by you try him long help him me plan long. One of them, explain him this land. Money I'm going to have finished one of them have. Because five million I'm meeting, I think, 2000 and, uh, 2015. 2014 and 15, I'm going to have a pack long NDB, five million. Long cooperative. Now, how much whole cooperative only, uh, only, only use him this land money? So, please, in you talk to this land because you talk to the process and all this or something. That is, you must have a penis now. You must have a penis also, maybe talk talk, yeah? Only start 14 years, only start inside the cooperative, and we start before. Now, me plus stop long, but help him long have money come, now he come long cooperative, yeah? Anyway, let me go away. So, in a bit talk talk, like, now, and this is the right time when me plus like stop now, me plus like carrying all this kind of something. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I have a director here. My director just come on behalf of uh, Mbai Kamna. Addressing this question by you. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, my name is uh, Willie Rea. Uh, me work long uh, not a division, but uh, this lab want a, a sticky issue. Me feel most um, this lab you know, want a right forum where we'll about discuss long uh, issue related to. Uh, 
uh, management of these funds. This, uh, we can explain, but we might be breaching some of the protocols. So I think we can talk or send me blah blah blah. So this blah forum and uh, specifically to do with uh, text and we uh, come here long um, to talk about the uh, registration process from uh, corporate society as well as uh, IPA registration of business names and companies. So, some of issues, um, MIPLA staff the backside from office. You can come and register on the MIPLA. All some issues you relate to the management, the management uh, with the department, you can write to them. We have the minister, we have the secretary, we have the registrar, We're also responsible for part of it. But uh, as a team here, we are technical officers, we are present here, just to uh, talk on the uh, registration of cooperative society, which is a very uh, special we call. Yes, now you need to talk on uh, take back PNG. How about you take back PNG? Because our, our society is built on communal based. And uh, you may all go to work like this, but every Christmas you go back to the house, you will go to your village. In the village, there are people, how people are very poor. How are we going to take that back? This way, cooperative society is a special we call we want to group people. We want to group people and empower people to so bring them out of poverty. This is what this um, model is all about because without developing such a model, how can governments, good policy can go down right into the community level to bring out our people. Our people that live in the village, majority of people live in the village. Like us, we are about maybe 20 or 30 percent working, living in towns and cities, but the majority they still live in the village, still in their um, rural settings. So through this cooperative society, we see there is a gap through, we can pull them out by bringing all the resources together, meet the required volume, we can export, we can build a capacity, we can empower them. That's the very special vehicle that we see. There's a gap through we can use to, to bring people out of poverty. That's a model we must promote about. But case by you long, uh, related to uh, five million, can I, I'm, 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 I'm not aware of this finance work because I work with uh, the SMA access to finance project and uh, I work with especially with the banks and you know, training our people to access funds back with the banks. So this is another part of me, but so work on that, but since this is a very sticky issue that you raised, uh, I think I have to stand up from my uh, present there to come and explain because so obviously yes, we are here for the administration process. I don't know if you might be breaching some of the protocols, so we may say something wrong at it. Oh, uh, bosom, uh, oh, we'll give you that approval to make the statement out there. So those are things, so thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you, Director. I think that was the last question that uh, Bayumi Kisim. Okay, um, just as a, a courtesy note, um, all questions below you me come on top of all offices low here. We are here trying to give you information. Eh? So some people will ask him whereby you plus have all same whether me plan up answer him now or me plan on up answer him now, please me plan, me plan like help him you plateau. Eh? And as indicated, our team and cooperative society team, they'll be they have a boot. All got boot stuff outside. So Please, this is the time. We plan courage in this kind of forum so that you make the right contacts with the right people from the right organizations to help you. So whether you speak to them now or you catch up on them all outside, way belong them. Thank you, Lord Lion. I'm all participants. Believe me, we come from the provinces to be here as well, not only NCD. I think from Manus. Um, um, thank you for um, coming. For now, we'll move on to, uh, and I'd like to thank um, our good officer from the Commerce Department, Mr. Asi. Thank you. We'll, um, thank you. Give me Python one plan long. We have about five, ten more minutes um, before lunch, but um, I'm sure lunch can wait for. Uh, the next maybe half an hour or so. I mean, 
lunch break, that's all. If like, you'll take afternoon tea, we'll all take afternoon tea. Um, we'll move on to our um, NCD rep from NCD, um, acting director for compliance. So by me allowing Ms. Amanda, I'll um, give presentation. Um, thank you, um, MC. Um, it's never easy going before lunch because everyone's already thinking about food. Um, luckily, um, she's given me extra half an hour, but I'll try and make it into 15 minutes and then we go from there. Um, my name is Amanda Binoka. Um, I'm acting director for compliance. Um, I've been in the role for two months or so now. Um, licensing division, which is under compliance. Um, our manager unfortunately couldn't be here, so I'll try, I've stepped in, I'll try and take your questions. Whatever I can't answer, we have our booth out there, we have a senior trade licensing officer and our liquor licensing officer outside. Some of you came around during the morning tea break, it was good to see, you had a lot of questions, you picked up application forms, thank you. Um, keep that going, we welcome the feedback that we get. Um, thank you to uh, Commissioner General for IRC, the um, commissioners for services and taxation, IRC staff. Thank you for affording NCDC the opportunity to come and speak um, at this forum. Um, I'm going to go through NCDC's business registration requirements um, this morning. Um, at the outset, just to give you a bit of context, in compliance division, or department rather, we have um, physical planning, we have building authority, we have uh, trade and liquor licensing, and then we have environmental health. We also have our support um, support units, administration, enforcement, and our urban safety or reserve police. Um, we went from a staff that was previously around 90 to now about 150 or so staff. So NCDC is serious about um, beefing up its compliance efforts because plenty of you residents of Mosby by Platok, but we haven't seen anything so far. You have laws, but you're not um, you're not enforcing them. So. We're trying to change that. We're trying to make Mosby a better city. Um, and I'm here to tell you a bit about NCDC's requirements for licensing. So our licensing functions, um, what do we do as part of licensing? Um, the law allows us to receive um, licensing applications for trade and liquor. Um, when we receive those licenses, or applications rather, uh, the law allows us to make inspections, um, process those applications, make sure all the standards and requirements are met, and if they are met, eventually you get your trade license or your liquor license. So that's what the law allows us to do. We have a monthly meeting of the liquor license, uh, sorry, the NCD licensing committee. That committee um, deliberates on all the applications, and again, if everything is in order, they issue out um, that respective trade and liquor license. Our, pr our presentation is um, tailored into a frequently asked questions format, so you'll see question on top and we're attempting to answer them. So who is eligible for a trade or liquor license or to apply for one? Basically, um, anyone, indigenous people, or individuals, foreigners, groups, as long as you meet the requirements which I will go through in the presentation, you can apply for a license. Now this is where it gets um, difficult for a lot of you and frustrating for a lot of you. What requirements? Uh, what documents are required rather? So it's a process as you will see. Um, you will need physical planning approval. Why do you need physical planning approval, you may ask? It's because you need to be trading in the right place. Um, and that's what that approval process helps you achieve. We do not allow trading on reserves. Um, we don't allow trading on open spaces for various reasons. Um, if it's an environmental protection zone, we don't want you trading there. So that uh, physical planning approval process makes sure that you are trading in the appropriate or in the right place. Um, you will require a building permit, a completion certificate, or a permissive occupancy certificate. This approval means that the building structure in which you're carrying out your business is structurally sound and it's safe for you to carry out that um, your activity. Um, so all of this, as you can see, they're in intended to help us make sure we're operating in the right place and in, in a safe manner for both business operators and for your customers as well. Um, we also ask uh, or require IPA documentation such as um, 
as you can see, the certificate of incorporation, a certificate of business name, or a foreign enterprise certificate for foreigners that wish to do business in our in our city. Um, additional requirements. So, um, I think Thomas from that end um, talked about his uh, lick lick store, his taka shop in a settlement. Um, our requirements at the moment are you have to be, uh, your, your property has to have a property description and you must be the owner or you must have a lease agreement from a person who you're leasing, leasing from to uh, run your business. So these are the requirements that we um, have in place, land title or lease agreement. Um, if it's a club, a club constitution or rules, a list of club members. Um, we also look at other authority documents uh, from Labor Department. We ask for a factory license. If you're going to have machinery or if it's inflammable liquids, um, that's why we are ask for a factory license. Um, land Transport Board license for automotive dealership and a pharmaceutical license from Department of Health. Um, those are some of the um, requirements for a new application. Uh, where can you lodge an application? Uh, City Hall, everyone um, by now should know City Hall. For our people that are coming from outside, that's the building opposite Vision City. Um, we're located on level two of um, City Hall. Um, once you get a new uh, an, a license, you have to renew it um, every year or once the validity period expires. So these are the requirements that you will also need to if you're renewing the license. Basically, it's copy of previous license, um, proof of settlement of land tax and garbage rates from NCDC revenue, and all the rest. Um, basically, if you're running a club, which is probably not for this, um, this forum here. These are our fees. Um, if you are applying for a liquor license, we have a non-refundable admin fee of 100 kina. And then the other various um, licenses depend on what type of activity. So a storekeeper's license, for instance, is 1,605 kina, whereas a cabaret license for the bigger clubs, those are 50,000 per year. So these are our set fees by law. They don't change from year to year. For trade, um, it's divided into two. Um, we have licensing activities on fixed rates. So your lick lick stores or taka shops is 100, and, uh, 100 kina. And then you have, for example, a restaurant not selling liquor, 500 kina. So again, all these fees are set. They don't change from year to year. And then we have a second category of trade licenses where the licensing activities are dependent on your annual turnover. As you can see, they range depending on the turnover from up to 250,000, which is 350 kina, or over 2 million, the license fee is 5,000 kina. Um, it takes about 28 days minimum for a general trade license application to be processed for you to get your license. For liquor applications, it takes two months or more. Um, why? Is LICA different? Um, it's because we have to, um, by requirement, go out, take an ad out in the papers and ask if people have any objections. So keep an eye out on your daily newspapers. If you see an advertisement from NCDC saying, please comment if you agree that this um, this outlet should be selling liquor. And if you if you live in a residence and you see that that's your neighbor, then you can go and make an objection right to NCDC and say, no, hang on, this is in a residential zone. People that sell liquor are supposed to be operating in a commercial zone, so you object. We take that objection into account when deliberating on the application. The validity of liquor li or licenses, apologies. Uh, for trade license, it depends on the class of the license. So for example, secondhand dealers, it's valid until 31st of December each year. So regardless of whether you get your license in March or you know, August, it's valid until 31st of December. For a barber shop, it's valid until 30th of June the following year. Um, for liquor licenses, um, full year, from 1st January to 31st December of each renewal period, and you renew as you um, go on. Um, I just wanted to, for this forum, so this, the presentation, I quickly ran through it, but it covers mostly, you know, your established premises, but I'll just speak off the cuff by saying, you know, NCDC looks, receives application for, um, registered properties. We don't, unfortunately, stage. We cannot invoice for applications in settlements. Um, so 
for the question about licensing in settlements, we don't give licenses to operate um, in settlements. If um, in residential areas, I had a question out during morning tea where someone said um, someone was selling liquor in a residential area, in a residential suburb. Um, that's not licensed by us. If they do have a license, it's either been issued by um, another body or it's um, a fake license. And that's something that we're working on to reduce the instance of fake licenses. Um, compliance has always been an issue for us, but we're trying to um, remedy that. Prosecution's been very hard for us, trying to get pe prosecute people that um, don't comply. So there are a lot of black markets um, throughout the city. We're aware of that. A couple of liquor blitzes that we've held we haven't been able to get off the line to prosecute. So we've been, we have confiscated liquor ex exhibits from 2010, 2012, still sitting in our containers waiting to be prosecuted. So those are some of the challenges we face, but I'm not sure exactly. Um, that's a question we're asking our, um, our legal division to help us out with. We, the, the manner in which we, there's no set process at the moment, and I'm not sure why. Like I said, that's one of the things I'm, I'm working on at the moment. Um, hopefully, we can see that through because then that gives us integrity when we're going out and, and you know carrying out these liquor blitzes. Um, in terms of trade licenses, I wanted to also encourage everyone: ask questions, do your due diligence checks. For example, if you're trying to apply for a lick lick store, um, and say you're a property owner at Boroko and you want to put up your lick lick store, you're not, you cannot go and just stand up a container tassel and get your cargo and start to operate. You need planning permission, building permission, and a trade license. The process is long. A lot of people get frustrated, um, but it's easier if you follow the process. You come in and you talk to our staff. Um, for NCD, you will also know that there's a requirement that you have to, for property owners, you have to settle all your outstanding land and garbage rates. A lot of our people don't do that, and when we go out and we inspect, we find that out. Also, Korosi Mipla and say, no one comes out and tells us to pay these things, but it's a requirement. If you do business in NCD or if you live in NCD, you have to pay land rates to lands department and land rates and garbage rates to NCDC. That's law, none of us can do anything about that. So what we try to do is inform people, come in, get your statements. Annually, the statements are issued. Um, if you're a property owner, you have a um, current lease, make it your business to come in and check with NCDC revenue team to find out whether your account is current or you have outstanding. If you have outstanding, work on a payment plan with them because that affects our applications for planning, building, and licensing. We are not able to receive those unless there's um, some sort of agreement in place, so there's nil um, outstanding. Um, I'll give you one more example. If you are an SME that wants to operate, say, out of Unity Mall at Waigani, so you want to rent a space there, you need a license as well, but you have signed a lease agreement with the landlord for uh, Unity Mall, and around that area, the landlord would be steamships. Planning permission and building permission should be obtained by your landlord. So always check before you sign your contract. Of um, ask if you, you know, if they've settled or find out if they've settled all their outstanding land rates. And some people enter into these agreements, get a bank loan, whatever, and then they find out they can't lodge because there's outstanding on the part of the landlord. And we find that a lot. Unfortunately, we cannot do anything about that because that's your business with the landlord. So. The, what I've learned over the years is, you know, encourage you all, ask questions, do your due diligence checks, check with lands department, check with NCDC. Uh, make sure the person you are going to be renting from has the appropriate um, approvals so that when you do sign your contract with them and you start to trade, you get the approvals, there won't be any problems, and you can get your um, trade license in time and you can start to operate. Um, so I just wanted to share those um, thoughts with you. Our process is fairly straightforward, but it can be as easy or as difficult depending on the requirements and the gaps in information, like I said. If your landlord doesn't have original planning permission or building permission, you're going to hit a stone wall and we'll have to start all over again. So always ask questions. Um, uh, our 
Office hours are 9 to 12 and 1 to 3 Mondays to Wednesdays at City Hall. We have a dedicated team um, that's called, previously we're regulatory services, now we're compliance, but there's staff there that can help you. Um, after the uh, presentation, um, if you want further information, please talk to Gwen and um, Lorraine out at our desk. They'll be happy to give you any information or contact details. Um, and you will note, for those of you that live in Mosby, NCDC has started um, a daily surveillance activity, and we've started out at Gerahu. So whereas previously it was not systematic, now Mipla started house by house, um, suburb by suburb. So we're trying to go out um, in that manner. If you have any questions about that, if you do receive a notice or anything, again, contact NCDC, find out how we can assist you. We're here to help. Lastly, and it, um, it's something that the IPA um, speaker also mentioned, um, help us to be honest. Do not offer our staff out there, when they come and find out your oper operation it doesn't have, a, have approvals, don't offer them any cash. Come to the office and help. let us help you get the necessary approvals. Because there's that cause that only delays your anxiety, your issues. Don't. Uh, we have a cash a revenue um, office that receives all your fees, all your um, penalties, or anything like that. That's at City Hall. Don't make payments to any of our staff out on the out on the field. It doesn't help you, and it only prolongs again that the delays in you getting making things right. And I echo um, uh, Commissioner General sentiments. I think he mentioned in his speech. He said um, he said. You know, do it the right way. Well, our department also says, you know, uh, he says, do the right thing, sorry. Our department also says, do the right thing in the right way. So we're here to help. We're a new look department trying to address, you know, our shortcomings previously. So we look forward to any um, constructive criticism you may have. Um, thank you. I think I've talked too much, so I'll leave it here and take your questions if you have any. Thank you, Ms. Amanda. Very informative, uh, not only for you people in NCDC here, but I think it would be uniform with other um, city authorities um, right throughout. So thank you for that. Um, our time is 5, 10 past, but like I said, time aside, this is the time for us to learn as much. We'll take three questions, and then we can um, go out for break. Seems like our, the, the same people asking questions. We'd like to give the opportunity to the others as well. Suppose no got them, but me plucky him, ask him all same line again. I think all red and all come. You may all get that? Uh, thank you, NCDC. One, one other rising, very passionate, um, entrepreneur that is coming up is the street market vendors are coming up even on the street too and uh, to your licensee uh, policies whether you have accommodated this part of informal economy uh, to uh, contribute to the nation's uh, building like through the tax collections that we are doing are you accommodating them at the same time law and order is also a business is a uh, problem risk too so you need to consider thank you Thank you very much for that question. It's a very relevant question. Um, um, so I'll speak in two parts. So firstly, you will notice NCDC has gone out in the media and put a, um, a ban on the sale of home bottled water and cooked f open fire cooked food. Um, that is the, based on health requirements, health concerns rather. And we, are, we have carried out a, a month's awareness and we're going to be working on a strategy to enforce that. Street vending, um, we have a street vending policy at the moment. Um, that policy considered all the issues that you were talking about. Um, however, it identified certain areas of vending only. So that's been worked through. Um, I will have to check with our strategic planning team that has um, prepared that policy to see if it's actually been implemented or it's still in consultation stages. Because the issue with street vending is, and it, it sort of goes against our other regulatory requirements to say people have to 
um, do business in the right place. And on public reserves, it's not the right place because it leaves you prone to car accidents if a vehicle comes off the road and bumps you. Who, you know, we cannot license you because then liability comes on NCDC. We have to make sure you vend in the appropriate place. So there is a strict vending policy at the moment, um, but actual implementation, I will need to um, get back to the forum. So I will brief Hazel in the next couple of days, and if you're still around by the fourth day, she'll be able to let you know which are the dedicated sites for vending. But thank you for your question. This law process law, given my license law, trading law, NCD. For those of us who live in NCD, when you see the presentation here, I'm Dr. Law, small business trading. Okay. Uh, the requirements that you put, like uh, physical planning, building permits, land title, and so forth. This law, by you looking more, saying you will not accommodate the majority of people living in the city. So my question I just wanted to bring to the management is that can you be able to, like a lot of like IRC work law, crime law, uh, free my whole sample of processes long accommodate more citizens so that the maximum or populations of the city or the country or get into business, then that is where uh, the, the, the mantra for government uh, take uh, power in the back and by effect of this law. So I'm just like asking, this law process you have put in the NCDC, it's very strict, like land titles, building permits, nah, all physical planning. I believe majority of the city all the time are making business, you are crushing them with your policies. So if NCDC, can you talk to the management in the tram law, open him up this land, at least relax him legally, so that all money can make him business. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yes, we do take note of that, and we are exploring options to make it um, easier, but still meeting our regulatory requirements, because that's our challenge. We enforce Physical Planning Act, Building um, Law, and license, Public Health Act. So we are mindful of that, and I'll just quickly share one example. Um, it's to do with tucker boxes, and where you know we have a public servant that has um, you know, left work, trying to make ends meet, doesn't have any other way of, um, you know, getting an income. So he starts to build a, a, a tucker box. And then he comes, we've, we've, we detect it, and we serve him a notice, he comes in, and then he finds out he has more than 15,000 in outstanding land rates and garbage rates. So, you know, we advise him, this is our process. He goes and gets a bank loan, and then comes back later and we tell him, no, you have a penalty fine of X amount to pay. So those are the issues that really resonate with me because um, I do recognize how our people um, struggle and I do hear their stories on a regular basis. So we are mindful of that. We are exploring opportunities to make that regulatory process, especially the requirement for getting building plans and physical planning plans. We're exploring options to make it either subsidize it or make it a bit easier, but it's premature to mention anything concrete at this stage. Thank you. We'll take the last question, and then um, again, Cindy, I'll take from the gentleman in front here. Thank you, Amanda, for your presentation. Uh, just uh, your thoughts on uh, land rates and garbage. And uh, if I heard it right, that uh, land rates is, uh, uh, one is to the land department, the other one is for NCT, or are there separation with it? I think uh, that's a sensitive uh, also issue and it's uh, of concern to those uh, that uh, own property. So I just want you to, you know, just elaborate uh, further on this, just, for, just to hear some sort of uh, doubts and uh, concerns. Thank you. Yeah, um, that's, thank you. That's been a concern by a lot of people. Yes, NCDC has a NCD land tax law, um, and that sets um, our taxation and our, you know, revenue generation process. So. By law, we charge land rates, and then we charge garbage rates as well for the services. Um, lands department 
is the mandated you know department for all land matters administration of land matters so they have their own system and they do charge their land rates as well um, for NCDC NCD if the land is not serviced for example if you um, buy land at Malolo Estate, which doesn't have a house on it, and you come in and NCDC says you you owe garbage rates. You can lodge a um, you know a, a, a report with photographs to say it's not serviced. High in NCDC doesn't service this. It's reconciled, and they only charge um, land rates. But for further detailed explanation. Um, feel free to join us at the booth. I'll put you in touch with our revenue team. Our revenue team looks after our um, land rates records and they can deal with any of your questions. Thank you. Um, thank you, Ms. Samenda. I think that will conclude um, the presentation and question time for our, our presenters, our other stakeholders. It is 20 past 12 now. Um, again, I'd like to say thank you for sitting um, for the morning session. Um, for those of our viewers that have joined us um, virtually, thank you, Tomas, too. Um, we'll take a break for now. Um, our apologies. Um, unfortunately, IRC cannot provide lunch for all of us, so we'll just take a break um, for the duration of um, 12.30 to 1.30, exactly one hour, and we resume um, by 1.30, so after lunch, we'll go through the teen registration process. So that will be when IRC officers get to speak to all of us and that should conclude for the day after lunch. Emtasol, thank you. Please don't forget to, um, as you go out to do, um, answer our survey forms. The survey forms are at the back. Um, officers will also be there to um, assist you to complete those forms um, online. So please do take time to complete those forms and give us a feedback. <laughs>